Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for joining me this afternoon and welcome to our free webinar. Uh, it's all about how to live stress-free. You can watch this video um, or just listen to the audio or you can just sit back and relax. You can do your work or your house chores. If ever you missed out anything, this video, this webinar will be saved in our uh, YouTube channel, Trip Ni Mark and Des. By the way, my name is Lourdes Clave. I'm a learning and development practitioner. Um, I'm a module developer. I'm a leadership coach and I'm also a classroom and training facilitator and a team building facilitator. This webinar will be in English, but some of the parts I will be explaining in Tagalog. With this webinar, you will learn the difference between stress and anxiety. How to recognize and deal with panic attacks. How to use visualization to overcome stress. How to let music get rid of your anxiety. And you will also learn 26 ways to relax. These days, everyone is feeling pressure. We rush at work. We rush at home. There's always so much that needs to be done. Stress and anxiety have become part of our lives. But how do we deal with it? Most people don't. Stress causes havoc on our bodies. Let it rage free and stress will make you sick, for sure. The statistics are staggering, you know. Research conducted by the um, National Institute of Mental Health has shown that anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness, surpassing even depression. Women are affected almost twice as much as men. And it's the number one mental health problem among this gender. But men are not unaffected though. Anxiety disorders in males are second only to alcohol and drug abuse. And stress and anxiety go hand in hand, you know? Stress and anxiety go hand in hand. One of the major symptoms of stress is anxiety. And stress accounts for 80% of all illnesses, either directly or indirectly. Stress is more dangerous than originally thought. You probably already know that it can raise your blood pressure, right? Increasing the likelihood of a stroke. But recently, it's been claimed that 90% of visits to a primary care physician were because of a stress-related disorder. Health Psychology Magazine reports that chronic stress can interfere with the normal function of the body's immune system. And studies have proven that stressed individuals have an increased vulnerability to catching an illness. Madaling magkasakit yung mga taong stress. And are more susceptible to allergic, autoimmune, or cardiovascular diseases. Doctors agree that during chronic stress, the functions of the body that are non-essential to survival, such as the digestive and immune systems, shut down. Stress is making us sick. Furthermore, stress often prompts people to respond in unhealthy ways, uh, like smoking, drinking alcohol, um, eating poorly, or becoming physically inactive. This damages the body in addition to the wear and tear of the stress itself. But you can't eliminate stress. It's part of your life. Hindi natin maiiwasan ito. You can, however, manage it. It's how we react to it that makes the difference. Meron mga tao marunong magdala ng stress. Coping techniques will help you control stress so that you can maintain your health and happiness. The first question is, really, ano ba katanungan natin bakit tayo may webinar na ganito? Why are we so stressed out ang tanong? Bakit ba tayo lagi na stress Di ba lagi nyo naririnig yung word na stress? Stress ako, stress yung ganito. Bakit ba tayo na-stress? Why are we so stressed out? We're living in a very trying and difficult times. Lalo na ngayon, pandemic. Andito si COVID-19. And then technology and advancements have made things more complicated, di ba? Ang technology, imbis na makatulong, minsan nakaka-stress din. Sometimes life can be terribly painful and unfair. Why do some people manage to go get through it easier than others? 
Some have better tools. Society as a whole is more stressed. Tayong lahat. Millions of people are in record levels of debt. Ang daming utang. Nakaka-stress ang utang. Many are losing their jobs. No, walang trabaho, na wala ng bahay. They're losing their homes, their health, and sometimes even their sanity. Ang katinuan, nawawala. Worry, depression, and anxiety seem to have become a way of life. Parang nagiging normal ni. It seems like we've entered what the what they call the age of anxiety. In fact, Time Magazine once proclaimed this in one of their issues. The constant stress and uncertainties of living in the 21st century have certainly taken their toll. The result is that many people are now living in a state of constant fear and worry. Turn on the news or open your Facebook and you're bombarded with disturbing images and stories. Nakaka-stress. You begin to wonder if you're safe anywhere. The information age is providing us access to endless data. Most of what is covered by the media is unsettling and disturbing news. Sa kakapanood natin ng mga balita, lalo tuloy tayo na i-stress. You know that even children and teens can feel the pressure of stress and anxiety. Teenagers who want to go to college feel pressure to obtain scholarships. Sa ang iba na pa part-time jobs, no, they need part-time jobs to earn money for extras that their parents, that the parents, I mean, can no longer afford. Add peer pressure into the mix. We are always on the go now, you know, and always reachable. Madali tayong matawagan because of our cell phones. Madali tayong matext or ma-message. Ma Wala nang downtime. There's no downtime in life anymore. We're so busy that we've forgotten how to relax. And our minds are constantly going over what needs to be done. We feel pressure to do these things because we think we have to. Not because we want to. It's difficult for people to just say no. No, not saying that one little word piles up unneeded expectations and obligations that make us feel anxious. All of us will experience situations that may cause us to become stressed or feel anxious. The reasons are endless, but here's a few common stress triggers. Kahit bumili na ng property, nakaka-stress. Career pressures. Having guests stay over, yung mag, may darating ka lang na bisita, ma-stress ka din minsan. Being bullied sa school or sa work, exams, looking after children, sorry to say, managing finances, relationship, relationship issues, I mean. Of course, deaths, illnesses, and even traveling can make us stress sometimes. Stress is a normal function of everyday life. Hindi talaga maiwasan ang stress. Only when it starts to take over your life, does it become a problem. Yun na nagpapadala ka. Everyone reacts to stressful situations differently. Iba-iba tayo ng ugali, iba-iba tayo ng reaksyon, no? It's usually when we don't feel in control of a situation that we feel its grip tightening around us causing extreme stress. Gain that control and lose the stress. You have everything inside you that you need to overcome stress and the accompanying anxiety. You can gain the, the upper hand on stress, I mean. But let's first look at the barriers we put up that are preventing us from becoming healthy and getting rid of our anxiety and stress. Let's talk about the blocking behaviors which are keeping your stress alive. There are three obsessive behaviors that you are likely to be engaging in, you know? And this is stopping your healing process and stopping you from enjoying your life. Let's recognize these barriers. It is the first step toward getting rid of the problems that happen when you're too stressed. The first is obsessive negativity. When you are obsessively negative, it means that you have a tendency towards looking at all things you don't like about people, places, situations, and things in your life. 
Is your cup half full or half empty? I believe that's half full and you can too. So, yung pananaw mo ba na lahat na lang ng bagay negative? So, obsessed ka sa pagiging negative. Your internal voice is telling you things like, you can't do this, or no, no one understands, or no, nothing ever works. You're sending yourself negative signals eh. You may be doing this unconsciously, so you need to tune in to this voice. It could be holding you back from knowing what it's like to view life from a positive lens and enjoy the beauty in yourself and people around you. There's a whole world out there for you with happiness and positive thinking. Then, second, you have this obsessive perfectionism. When you engage in obsessive perfectionism, you are centered on trying to do everything just so, to the point of driving yourself into an anxious state of being. You may find yourself making statements such as, Oh, I'll have to do this right. Or I'll be a failure. Kailangan kong gawin to ng tama. Or if I am not precise, people will, will, will be mad at me, maggalit sa akin. And, and they won't like me. You know, yung mga feeling na, Naku, pag hindi ko to tinama, ginawa ng tama, baka hindi nila ako magustuhan. Again, this behavior may be totally under the threshold of your awareness. Alam mo, alam mo sa sarili mo. But it interferes greatly with your ability to enjoy things without feeling uptight and stressed. Finally, the third one is there is obsessive analysis. When you're obsessed about analyzing things, you find yourself wanting to rehash a task or an issue over and over again. For instance, you might find yourself making, statement, making statements such as, I need to look this over, study it, and know it inside and out, or else I can't relax. Or if I relax and let things go without looking them over repeatedly, things could go wrong. Overthinking ka. Nag-overthink ka. You're obsessed with analyzing everything. While analytical thinking is an excellent trait, paganda rin naman, but if it's done in excess, you never get to stop and smell the roses because you're too busy trying to analyze everything and everyone around you. Gaining insight into this type of behavior is one of the most important keys to letting go of stress and getting complete power over your anxiety. Secondly, keep a journal. Magsulat ka. Write down and establish patterns of when you are using blocking behaviors. No? Even if you are not thrilled with the idea of writing, kasi tayo ngayon medyo tamad na tayong magsulat eh. Mahilig na tayong mag-cellphone kasi. But you can make little entries into a notebook or journal each day. The great part is that you'll begin to see patterns in your behavior that reveal exactly what you're doing to prevent yourself from curing your anxiety. I'll give you some great stress-busting techniques later, but you need to recognize these blockages first so you can move into the healing stage and conquer your stress and anxiety. Many people think that stress and anxiety is the same thing. This couldn't be further from the truth. May kaibahan po sila. Now, let's talk about uh, stress or anxiety. Stress is caused by, a, uh, by something happening in your life now. Anxiety is stress that continues after the stressor is gone. You know, stress can come from any situation or thought that makes you feel frustrated, angry, nervous, or even anxious. What is stressful to one person is not necessarily stressful to another. So, iba-iba tayo ng stress. Anxiety naman is a feeling of apprehension or fear and is almost always accompanied by feelings of impending doom. The source of this uneasiness is not always known or recognized, which can add to the distress that you feel. Stress is the way our bodies and minds react to something which upsets our normal balance in life. An example of stress is the response we feel when we are frightened or threatened. During stressful events, our, ad our adrenal glands you know, release adrenaline, a hormone which activates our body's defense mechanisms, causing our hearts to pound, blood pressure to rise, muscle to, muscles to tense, naninigas tayo, no? and the pupils of our eyes to dilate. 
A principal indication of increased stress is an escalation in your pulse, in your pulse rate. However, a normal pulse rate doesn't necessarily mean you aren't stressed. Constant aches and pains, uh, palpitations, anxiety, chronic fatigue, crying, over or under eating, um, frequent infections, and a decrease in your sexual desire are signs that indicate that you might be under stress. Of course, every time we are under stress, we do not react to such an extreme and we are not always under such a great duress or fear every time we are confronted with a stressful situation. Some people are more susceptible than others to stress, sabi ko nga kanina. For some, even ordinary daily decisions seems insurmountable. Yung mga simpleng bagay, parang hindi nila kaya na stress agad. Deciding what to have for dinner, napakasimple no, na-stress na yung iba. Kung ano ang kakainin mamaya or what to buy at the store is a seemingly monumental dilemma for them. For some, ha? hindi para sa lahat. On the other hand, there are those people who seem to thrive under stress by becoming highly productive, being driven by the force of pressure. Merong ding iba na nagiging uh, productive pag na-stress. Research have shown that women who have children actually have higher levels of stress. I mean, stress-related hormones in their blood than women without children. But does this mean women without children don't experience stress? Absolutely not. Kahit walang anak, nagkaka-stress. It means only that women without children may not experience stress as often or to the same degree which women with children do. According to sa mga studies, ha, this means for women with children, it's particularly important to schedule time for yourself. You will be in a better frame of mind to help your children and meet the daily challenges of being a parent once your stress level is reduced. Anxiety, on the other hand, is a feeling of unease. Everybody experiences it when faced with a stressful situation. For example, before an exam or an interview, Diba? Or during a worrying time such as pag may sakit, during an illness, it is normal to feel anxious when facing something difficult or dangerous. And mild anxiety can be a positive and useful experience also. So it depends. However, for many people, anxiety interferes with normal life. Excessive anxiety is often associated with other psychiatric conditions. So delikado ito, no? Such as depression. Anxiety is considered abnormal when it is very prolonged or severe. It happens in the absence of a stressful event. Yung hindi ka naman stress pero naa-anxious ka, yung nag-aalala ka lagi. Or it is interfering with everyday activities such as going to work. Hindi ka na makapasok kasi lagi kang may takot, may, may anxiety ka. The physical symptoms of anxiety are caused by the brain Sending messages to the parts of the body to prepare for the fight or flight response na tinatawag. The heart, the lungs, and other parts of the body work faster. The brain also releases stress hormones, including adrenaline. Common indicators of excess excessive anxiety include diarrhea, dry mouth, rapid heartbeat or palpitations, insomnia, irritability or anger, Inability to concentrate, fear of being crazy, feeling unreal and not in control of your actions, which is called depersonalization. Anxiety can be brought on in many ways. Obviously, the presence of stress in your life can make you have anxious thoughts. Many people who suffer from anxiety disorders, disorders occupy their minds with excessive worry. Lagi sila nag-aalala. Huh? This can be worry about anything from health matters to job problems to world issues, kahit ano na lang. No? Certain drugs, both recreational and medicinal, can also lead to symptoms of anxiety due to either side effects of, or withdrawal from the drug. Such drugs huh, include caffeine, alcohol, nicotine, cold remedies, uh, and decongestants. Um, those medicines for asthma, uh, some antidepressants, cocaine, amphetamines, diet pills, 
ADHD medications, and thyroid medications. A poor diet can also contribute to stress or anxiety. For example, low levels of vitamin, vitamin B12. Performance anxiety is related to specific situations like if you're taking a test or making a presentation in public. Um, Post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD is a stress disorder that develops after a traumatic event like yung galing sa mga war or, or those who experience physical or sexual assault or a natural disaster. It is very rare cases also yung mga may um, tumor of the adrenal gland may be the cause of anxiety o meron silang sakit. This happens because of an overproduction of hormones responsible for the feelings and symptoms of anxiety. While anxiety may seem a bit scary, no? nakakatakot ang laging tayong anxious or meron tayong anxiety. What's even scarier is that excessive anxiety and stress can lead to depression. Suffering from depression can be a lifelong struggle, you know that? But the good news is that all of this is manageable actually. So let's answer a few little uh, a few questions, you know, and to see if you are suffering from too much stress or uh, or are you suffering from excessive anxiety or depression. So I'll ask you some questions and you can pause and think about it and, and answer. Before that, you need to know that I am not a medical professional. You know? This information has come from reliable sources. And, and isn't meant to be a complete diagnos diagnostic tool in any way. These questions are simply guidelines uh, to help you recognize any problems that you might have and be able to effectively deal with those problems. Because depression can be the most serious of our topics. Let's start by seeing if you may be depressed. Keep in mind that everyone has his or her blue days. You know, yung... Uh, may mga araw na down tire or malungkot, blue, we feel blue. The thing that separates clinical depression from simple melancholy is that the symptoms occur over a period of time. They don't come and go. They stay around for a while and can affect your life adversely. Ask yourself the following questions and then answer yes. If you've been feeling this way consistently over a period of uh, two weeks. Number one, do you find yourself constantly sad? Number two, are you unmotivated to do simple things like shower, clean up the house, or make dinner? Parang tinatamad ka na nagawin yung mga simpleng bagay. Number three, do people tell you you're overly irritable? Madali kang magalit, mairita, madaling mairita. Number four, do you have trouble concentrating? Number five, are you feeling isolated from family and friends even when they are around you? Number six, have you lost interest in your favorite activities? Number seven, do you feel hopeless, worthless, or are you guilty for no reason at all? Number eight, are you always tired and have trouble sleeping? And number nine, has your weight fluctuated significantly? Taas baba. If you can answer yes to five or more of these questions, you could be suffering from clinical depression. You could be. I'm not saying you are. It is important for you to seek out the help of a medical professional, whether that is a doctor or a therapist. There are many medications out there that can help with depression. If you think you are depressed, please act now. You deserve to be happy. Let's see if stress and anxiety are taking over in your life. Ask yourself the following. Number one, do you worry constantly and talk to yourself negatively? Number two, do you have difficulty concentrating? Number three, do you get mad and react easily? Number four, do you have recurring neck uh, or neck pains or headaches? Number five, do you grind your teeth? Number six, do you frequently feel overwhelmed, anxious, or depressed? Number seven, 
do you feed your stress with unhealthy habits such as eating or drinking excessively, smoking, arguing, or avoiding yourself and life in other ways? Number eight, do small pleasures fail to satisfy you? And number nine, do you experience flashes of anger over a minor problem? Madaling magalit sa malit na bagay, galit agad. If you answer yes to most of these questions, then you do have excessive stress in your life. The good news is that you have joined this webinar and you learn many valuable techniques to cope with that stress. But we'll, but we'll get to that later. Let's move on to anxiety. Number one, do you experience shortness of breath, heart palpitation, or shaking while at rest? Number two, do you have a fear of losing control or going crazy? Number three, do you avoid social situations because of fear? Number four, do you have fears of specific objects? Number five, do you fear that you will be in a place or situation from which you cannot escape? Number six, do you feel afraid of leaving your home? Number seven, do you have recurrent thoughts or images that refuses to go away? Number eight, do you feel compelled to perform certain activities repeatedly? Number nine, do you persistently relieve an upsetting event from the past? Lagi mo iniisip yung nangyaring masaba sa nakaraan. Answering yes to more than four of these questions can indicate an anxiety disorder. Now, suffering from depression, too much stress, or excessive anxiety can endanger your overall health. And it's time to take steps to overcome this. Right now, kailangan natin gawa ng paraan yan. Stress and anxiety affects many factors in our body, not only in our mental state. Cancer and other deadly diseases are related to stress and anxiety because of the changes in the chemical composition in our body. Don't be a victim of stress and anxiety. Discipline, a proper schedule, and knowing your limitations will help. Learn your limitations and stick to it. Do not overexert yourself. Just try to go over the border an inch at a time. You can lead a productive, successful, and fulfilling life and career without endangering your health. Living with anxiety will slowly kill you while driving your family and friends away. Stress and anxiety can lead to panic attacks, which can be a serious situation. Let's explore that subject a little more. We have talked about stress and uh, anxiety and depression. Now let's talk about panic attacks. One of the unfortunate outcomes from suffering from excessive stress and anxiety is a physical reaction of your body to the situation. It's like your body is telling you that you need to rest for a moment. Except when you're having a panic attack, it's anything but restful. Let's look at the signs of an impending panic attack. Palpitations a pounding heart or an accelerated heart rate, sweating, trembling or shaking, shortness of breath, choking sensation, chest pain or discomfort, nausea or stomach cramps, the realization a feeling of unreality, fear of losing control or going crazy, fear of dying, numbness or a tingling sensation in your face and limbs, chills or, ha or hot flash. You would be surprised at how many people go to the hospital emergency room completely sure that they're having a heart attack only to find out that it's a panic attack. They're that intense. No? Akala ng iba meron na silang heart attack. Panic attack pala yun. It's very difficult for your loved ones to imagine or even understand what you're going through when you have a panic attack, hindi maintindihan ng ibang tao yun. They may lose patience with you, tell you to get over it, or they think you're faking, akala nila nagkukunwari ka lang. It may help if you show them the following scenario. Halimbawa, pwede mo itong ikwento sa kanila. Halimbawa, you are standing in line at the grocery store, no? It's been a long wait, but there's only one customer to go before you make it to the cashier. Iisa na lang. Wait, what was that? 
An unpleasant feeling forms in your throat. Your chest suddenly feels tighter. Now a su sudden shortness of breath. And what do you do now? Your heart skips a beat. Tapos iniisip mo, please God, not here. You make a queen scan of the territory. Is it threatening? Tumintingin ka sa paligid mo. There are four unfriendly faces that are be who are behind you and one person is in front. Then you feel these pins and needles seem to prick you through your left arm. Para kang tinutusok. You feel slightly dizzy and then the explosion of fear as you dread the worst. You're about to have a panic attack. There is no doubt in your mind that this is going to be a big one. Okay, time for you to focus. You know how to deal with this. At least you hope you do. Start breathing deeply. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Think relaxing thoughts. And again, while breathing in, think relax. And then breathe out. But it doesn't mean, but it doesn't seem to be having any positive effect. Parang wala nangyayari. Like breathe in, breathe out ka na parang wala. In fact, just concentrating on breathing is make you feel self-conscious and more uptight. Maybe if you just try to relax your muscles. Try to relax your muscles. Tense both shoulders. Hold for 10 seconds. Then release. Try it again. Nope. Still no difference. Wala pa rin nangyayari. The anxiety is getting worse. And the very fact that you're out of coping techniques worsens your panic. If only you were with a family member, no? kung may kasama ka lang or a close friend, then you could feel more confident in dealing with the situation. The adrenaline is pumping through your system. Your body is tingling with uncomfortable sensations. You feel like you're losing complete control of your emotions. No one around you has any idea of the sheer terror you are experiencing. You're experiencing sorry. For them, it's just a regular day and another frustratingly slow line at the grocery store. You realize then you're out of options. It's time to run. You excuse yourself from the line looking embarrassed and it is now that it is your turn to pay. Ikaw na sana ang susunod sa kahera. The cashier looks bewildered when you leave your shopping behind and stroll towards the door. Umalis ka na. There is no time for excuses. You need to be alone. You leave the supermarket and get into your car to ride it out alone. You wonder whether or not this one was the big one. The one you fear will push you over the edge mentally and physically. Ten minutes later, the panic subsides. And umaga pa lang, no? How in the world can you make it through the rest of your day? If you suffer from panic or anxiety attacks, the scenario probably sounds very familiar. Yung bigla ka nalang makakaramdam ng takot. Bigla ka nalang makakatakot, makakaramdam ng kabah. Na hindi mo alam bakit ka kinabahan. Siguro some of you are experiencing this. It may have even induced feelings of anxiety and panic just reading it. In fact, it was really difficult for me to write about it. The particular situations that trigger your panic and anxiety may differ. Maybe the bodily sensations are a little different. What's important to realize is that panic attacks are very real to the people who are having them and they should never be pushed too off to the side. That's the strange thing about panic. Sometimes your mind can play tricks on you. Even when you think you're in no danger of having a panic attack, your brain might be feeling differently. That's the scary part. The good part is that there are ways you can combat panic attacks and cope much better when you find yourself in that situation. Now let's talk about dealing with panic attacks. If you have panic attacks, you are not alone. It is estimated that almost 5% of the population suffer from some form of anxiety disorder. For some, it may be the infre infrequent panic attacks that only crop up in particular situations like when having to speak in front of others, public speaking. While for other people, it can be so frequent and recurring that it, it inhibits them from leaving their home. Yung iba, parang takot ng lumabas. No? Sobra na. Frequent panic attacks often develop into what medical physicians refer to as an anxiety disorder. There are many ways of There are many ways of coping with an anxiety disorder. Some may not work for you, but others just might. 
It helps to know some of the most common coping techniques for dealing with panic attacks when they begin. Your first step is to recognize when a panic attack is about to begin. When you have enough of them, you start to really pay attention to the tingling sensation, the shortness of breath, and the disconnection from the real life around you. Many people I talk to wonder what is that disconnection, what disconnection is like. They have a hard time understanding it. Those of us who have panic attacks are all too familiar with it. It's like you can look at a solid object and see that it is there. You know it's there, but a part of your mind doubts that it really is there. You may find yourself reaching out to touch that object just to be sure. You feel like you're not a part of the world around you. It's as if you're just a spectator in your own life with no control over anything around you. This is a horrible feeling, you know. Now, how do you start trying to combat your panic attacks? What if I told you the trick to ending panic and anxiety attacks is to want to have one? That sounds strange, even contradictory, doesn't it? But the want really does, this, does help push it away. Does this mean that you should be able to bring on a panic attack at this very moment? Absolutely not. What it means is that when you're afraid of something, in this case, a panic attack, it will more than likely appear and wreak havoc. When you stand up to the attack, your chances of fending it off are much greater. If you resist a situation out of fear, the fear around that issue will persist. How do you stop resisting? You move directly into it, into the path of the anxiety, and by doing so, it cannot persist. Para sinasabi mo, bring it on. Pinaghahandaan mo siya. In essence, what this means is that if you daily voluntarily seek to have a panic attack, you cannot have one. Try it this very moment to have a panic attack and I will guarantee you cannot. You might not, you might not realize it, but you have always decided to panic. Pag may mga sitwasyon, ay alam ko magpapanik ako pag ganyan. Pinangungunahan mo ang iyong sarili. But you make the choice by saying this is beyond my control, whether it be consciously or subconsciously. Anxiety causes an imbalance in your life whereby all of the mental worry creates a top-heavy sensation. All of your focus is moved from the center of your body to the head. Schools of meditation often like to demonstrate an example of this top-heavy imbalance by showing how easily the body can lose its sense of center. The key to overcoming panic attacks is to relax. That's easy, to, that's easy to say but actually difficult to do for some. A good way to do this is to concentrate on your breathing, making sure it is slow and steady. One of the first signs of a panic attack is difficulty breathing. And you may find yourself panting no? to catch a breath. When you focus on making those breaths even, your heart rate will slow down and the panic will subside. Breathing more slowly and deeply has a calming effect. A good way to breathe easier is to let all the air out of your lungs. This forces your lungs to reach for a deeper breath next time. Continue to focus on your out breath, letting all the air out of your lungs, and soon you'll find your breathing is deeper and you feel calmer. Ideally, you want to take the focus off the fact that you're having a panic attack. Try to press your feet, one at a time, into the ground. Feel how connected and rooted they are to the ground. An even better way is to lie down with your bottom near a wall. Place your feet against the wall, your knees are bent, and press your feet one at a time into the wall. If you can breathe in as you press your foot against the wall and breathe out as you release it, it will be more effective. You should alternate between your feet. Do this for 10 to 15 minutes or until the panic subsides. Use all of your senses to take full notice of what you see, 
hear, feel, and smell in your environment. This will help you to remain present. Panic is generally associated with remembering upsetting events from the past or anticipating something upsetting in the future kasi naranasan mo. O kaya nagpapanik ka kasi naisip mo baka mangyari na naman. Anything that helps keep you focused in the present will be calming. Try holding a pet. Looking around your room and noticing the colors, the textures and shapes, listening closely to the sounds that you hear or you call a friend or smell the smells that are near you. Many people strongly advocate aromatherapy to deal with panic and anxiety. Lavender can have an especially calming and soothing effect when you smell it. You can find essential oil lavender at many stores. Keep it handy and take a sniff when you start feeling anxious. Try putting a few drops of lavender essence oil into some oil and rub on your body. Keep a prepared mixture in a dark glass bottle for when you need it. You can even prepare several bottles or you, you can buy these uh, uh, ready bottles with a small one to carry with you. You may want to prepare yourself before a panic attack happens. When you're not in a panic state, make a list of the things that you're afraid will happen. Then write out calming things that tell you the opposite of your fears. Then you can repeat this, th these things to yourself when the panic starts to come. Prepare, of, uh, prepare a list of things to do in case of panicked feelings. And it will be ready for you when you need it. Fill it with lots of soothing messages and ideas of calming things to do. I find this to be a very helpful tool. I am never without any small notebook that has these positive affir affirmations in it. Panic can be a very scary thing to go through, especially if you're alone. Preparing for when the panic comes can really help reduce the panic, you know, and even sometimes help to prevent it. Next topic that we're going to talk about is calm yourself, how to calm yourself with visualization. The purpose of visualization is to enable you to quickly clear mental stress, tension, and uh, anxious thinking. The visualization can be used when feeling stress and is particularly useful when your mind is racing with fearful, anxious thinking. This visualization process, when practiced frequently, is very effective for eliminating deep-seated mental anxieties or intrusive thoughts. To gain maximum benefit, the exercise must be car carried out for longer than 10 minutes at a time, as anything sh shorter will not bring noticeable results. There is no right or wrong way to carry out the visualization. Be intuitive with it and do not feel you are unable to carry it out if you feel you are not very good at seeing mental imagery. As long as your attention is, is on the exercise, you will gain benefit. It is best to do this exercise in a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. And then when you are more practiced, you will be able to get the same positive results in a busier environment such as the workplace. You should notice a calming effect on your state of mind along with a sensation of mental release and relaxation. Either sitting or standing, close your eyes and move your attention to your breath. To become aware of your breathing, place one hand on your upper chest and one on your stomach. Take a breath and let your stomach swell forward as you breathe in and fall back gently as you breathe out. Take the same depth of breath each time and try to get a steady rhythm going. Your hand on your chest should have little or no movement. Again, try to take the same depth of breath each time you breathe in. This is called diaphragmatic breathing. When you feel comfortable with this technique, try to slow your breathing rate down by instituting a short pause after you have breathed out and before you breathe in again. Initially, it may feel as though you are not getting enough air in, but with regular practice, this slower rate will soon start to feel comfortable. It is often helpful to develop a cycle when you count to three. When you breathe in, pause, 
and then count to three when you breathe out whatever is comfortable for you two or four this will also help you focus on your breathing without any other thoughts coming into your mind if you're aware of other thoughts entering your mind just let them go and bring your attention back to counting and breathing continue doing this for a few minutes if you practice this you will begin to strengthen the diaphragmatic muscle and it will start to work normally leaving you with a nice relaxed feeling all the time now move your attention to your feet try to really feel your feet see if you can feel each toe picture the base of your feet and visualize roots growing slowly out through your soles and down into the earth the roots are growing with quickening pace and are reaching deep into the soil of the earth you are now rooted firmly to the earth and feel stable like a large oak or redwood tree stay with this feeling of grounded safely and security for a few moments once you've created a strong feeling or impression of being grounded like a tree visualize a cloud of bright light forming way above you a bolt of lightning from the luminous cloud hits the crown of your head and that ignites a band of bright white light descending slowly from your head all the way down to your body over your legs and out past your toes as the band of light passes over you feel it clearing your mental state it is illuminating your mind and clearing any disturbing or stressful thoughts that you may have been thinking about repeat this image four or five times until you feel a sense of clearing and release from any anxious thinking in finishing see yourself standing under a large luminescent waterfall no? the water is radiant and bubbling with vitality and life as you stand under the waterfall you can feel the water run over every inch of your body soothing you and stealing with you a sense of deep calm try to taste the water open your mouth and let it run into your mouth refreshing you hear it as it bounces off the ground around you the water is life itself and it is washing away stress and worry from your mind and body after a moment open your eyes try to use all of your senses when carrying out the visualization to make the pictures in your mind as real as possible use your senses of touch taste and hearing feel the water trickle down your body hear the sound it makes as it splashes over you the more realistic the imagined scenarios the more benefit you will gain many people report very benefit you can use any situation or location that will help calm you we liken this to finding your happy place maybe you feel relaxed in a swimming pool or on the beach imagine yourself there just make sure wherever you go in your mind is a place where you can be calm and rested by visualizing the different situations you're allowing your mind to release it is like sending a message to your brain that when you close your eyes and begin this process it is time for letting go of anything that it has been mentally holding on to including anxious thinking in order to train your mind how to let go of the stress it is important to practice this daily with practice you can learn to release all stress within minutes of starting the exercise your daily practice should take place before going to bed as that will enable you to sleep more soundly many people do not do these visualizations in the bedroom but some other room before going to bed that way when they enter the bedroom and close the door they are leaving the mental stress and anxious thinking behind them just be sure you have the opportunity to totally concentrate on your mental images visualization as a tool for dealing with mental stress is very effective if such visualization is carried out properly you can reach a deep feeling of inner calm this technique probably will not work in helping to end an anxiety attack but it can help that attack from beginning it is a very powerful powerful support tool 
for ridding yourself of general anxiety sensations. With practice, you find you go days without having anxious thinking interrupt your life. And importantly, this significantly reduces the level of general anxiety you feel. Visualization is a tool you can use to overcome anxious thoughts and feelings. Now, let's look at various ways that you can combat excessive stress, beginning with music. Let's talk about using music to beat stress. Now, listening to music will also alleviate stress. Nakakawala ng stress din ang music. Everyone has different taste in music. You should listen to the music that makes you feel comfortable. Sitting down and forcing yourself to listen to relaxation music that you don't like may create stress, not alleviate it. Meaning, pag may nagsabi sa'yo na, oh, makinig ka sa relaxing music, pero hindi ka naman talaga mahilig sa relaxing music, this might not help. So, music is a significant mood changer and reliever of stress, working on many levels at once. The entire human energetic system is extremely influenced by sounds. The physical body responds specifically to certain tones and frequencies. Special consideration should be given to the positive effects of one actually playing or creating music themselves. Among the first stress-fighting changes that take place when we hear a tune is an increase in deep breathing. The body's production of serotonin also accelerates. Playing music in the background while you are working has been found to reduce the stress of the workplace. Music was found to reduce heart rates and to promote higher body temperature, an indication of the onset of relaxation. Combining music with relaxation therapy was more effective than doing relaxation therapy alone. Many experts suggest that it is the rhythm of the music or the beat that has the calming effect on us, although we, not, we may not be very conscious about it. When we were in our mother's womb, we were influenced by the heartbeat of our mother. We respond to the soothing music at later stages in life. Perhaps, associating it with a safe, relaxing, product, protective environment provided by our mother. Music can be one of the most soothing or ner nerve-wracking experiences available. Choosing what will work for any individual is difficult. Most will choose something they like instead of what might be beneficial. In doing extensive research on what any given piece of music produces in the physiological response system, many unexpected things were found. Many of the so-called meditation and relaxation recordings actually produce adverse EEG patterns, just as bad as hard rock and heavy metal. The surprising thing was many selections of Celtic or Native Americans as well as um, Various music containing loud drums or flutes were extremely, uh, were extremely soothing. The most profound finding was any music performed live and even at moderately loud volumes, even if it was somewhat discordant, had a very beneficial response. As we mentioned before, no single music is a good fit for everyone. No? People have different tastes. It is important that you like the music being played. I recently picked up a rest and relaxation uh, music that has done wonders for me. So it has the sounds of the ocean in the background while, beauty, while beautiful piano music plays. I find this very soothing, but that's for me. It's not a good idea to play ballads or songs that remind you of a sad, in your li of a sad time in your life when you're trying to distress. Stress ka na nga, makikinig ka pa sa mga sad songs, hindi lalo ka maiiyak. Remember, you're trying to relax and wash away the anxious thoughts. The last thing that you need is for a sad song to bring back unhappy memories. Here are some general guidelines to follow when using music to distress. To wash away stress, try taking a 20-minute sound bath. Put some relaxing music on, then lie in a comfortable position on a couch or on the floor near the speakers. 
For a deeper experience, you can wear headphones to focus your attention and to avoid distraction. Choose music with a slow rhythm, slower than the natural heartbeat, which is about 72 beats per minute. Music that has a repeating or, uh, or a cyclical pattern is found to be effective in most people. As the music plays, allow it to wash over you, rinsing off the stress from the day. Focus on your breathing, letting it deepen, slow, and become regular. Concentrate on the silence between the notes in the music. This keeps you from analyzing the music and makes relaxation more complete. If you need stimulation after a day of work, go for a faster music rather than slow, calming music. Turn up the volume and dance. It doesn't matter if you can actually dance. Just move along with the music and do what feels good. You'll be shocked at the release you can feel. When going gets tough, go for a music you are familiar with, such as a childhood favorite or favorite oldies. You don't know the songs that your that your parents like that you always hear before. Familiar, familiarity often breeds calmness. Take walks with your favorite music playing. Inhale and exhale in tune with the music. Let the music take you. Combining exercise, imagery, and music in, is a fantastic stress reliever. Listening to the sounds of nature such as ocean waves or the calm of a deep forest can reduce stress. Try taking a 15 to 20 minute walk if you're near the seashore or a quiet patch of woods. If not, you can buy this, uh, uh, this music online, these sounds online uh, in many online music stores. And if you want, you can also listen to some of the uh, soothing music uh, that we have in our channel. You can find it in our channel, uh, Trip Ni uh, Mark and Des uh, YouTube channel. Now, let's talk about stress management. As I mentioned uh, earlier, we know that stress is a part of life and there's no getting away from it. In fact, some stress is good stress. It can motivate you to do things you would not do in a relaxed state. Stress can make you brave enough to go forward when normally you would hesitate. You have to be resilient in order to effectively cope with stress and help it enhance your life instead of control it. How do you get strong and resilient? By learning how to take control of your stress and make it work for you instead of against you. Recognizing stress symptoms can be a positive influence in that we're compelled to take action. And the sooner the better. It's not always easy to discern why you have the stress in each situation, but some of the more common events that trigger those emotions are the death of a loved one, even the birth of a child, a job promotion, or a new relationship. We experience stress when we readjust our lives. Your body is asking you for your help when you feel these stress symptoms. There are three major approaches to manage stress. The first is the action-oriented approach. In this method, the problems that cause stress are identified and necessary changes are made to alleviate them. The next approach is emotionally oriented. When you overcome stress by giving a different color to the experience that causes stress, the situation which causes stress is seen humorously or from a different angle. And sometimes you can't avoid the stressor but you can learn to see the humor instead of the doom. The third way is acceptance-oriented approach. This approach focuses on surviving the stress caused due to some problem in the past. The first stress management tip is to understand the root cause of your stress. No one understands your problem better than you do. A few minutes spent to recognize your true feelings can completely change the situation. During this process, identify what triggered the stress. Share this with a loved one if you can. If you're overstressed and feel you are going to collapse, take a deep breath and count to 10. This pumps extra oxygen into your system and rejuvenates the entire body. 
When under severe stress, meditate for a moment and pull out of the current situation for a little while. Stand up from your current position and walk. Stretch yourself. Soon you will find that the stress has lessened. This is because you have relaxed. Relaxation is the best medicine for stress. Smiling is another form of stress management. If you are at the workplace, just stand up and smile at your colleague in the far corner. You will see a change in your mood. You can also invent your own stress management tips. The basic idea here is to identify the cause of stress and to pull out from, from it for a moment and then deal with it. Taking a short walk and look at nature can be another stress reliever. Drinking a glass of water or playing small games are simple stress management techniques. The whole idea is change the focus of attention. Then when you return to the problem, it does not look as monstrous. Now listen to this here carefully. Here are 26 steps you can take toward relieving stress. Here are 26 tips for you. Number one, don't just sit there. Move! According to many psychologists, motion creates emotion. When you are idle, when you're not doing anything, it's easier to become depressed. Your heart rate slows down, less oxygen travels to your brain, and you are slumped somewhere in a chair blocking air from reaching your lungs. Right now, regardless of how you're feeling, get up and walk around at a fast tempo. Even jump up and down a little bit. It may sound as silly, but the result speaks for themselves. Try it for a few minutes. It works like magic. Exercise can be a great stress buster. People with anxiety disorders might worry that aerobic exercise could bring on a panic attack. After all, when you exercise, your heart rate goes up, you begin to sweat, and your breathing becomes heavier. Don't panic. It's not an attack. Tell yourself this over and over while you're exercising. Realize that there's a big difference between the physical side of exercise and what happens when you exercise. Next one, smell the roses as they say. Go on that trip that you've been dreaming about. Visit an old friend. Paint a picture. Just do something for yourself. It'll jolt your imagination and spur your creativity and help you detach from your daily routine. Next, help others cope with their problems. It is very therapeutic when you engross yourself in helping others. You will be surprised how many people's problems are worse than yours. You can offer others assistance in countless ways. Don't curl up in your bed and let depression take hold of you. Get out and help somebody. But be careful. Don't get caught up in other people's problems in an attempt to forget about your own. Next, laugh a little. You've heard that laughter is a good internal medicine. It relieves tension and loosens the muscles. It causes blood to flow to the heart and brain. More importantly, laughter releases a chemical that rids the body of pains. Every day, researchers discover new benefits of laughter. Let me ask you this question. Can you use a good dose of belly-shaking laughter every now and then? Of course you can. What are you waiting for? Go, for, go to a comedy club or watch some funny movies. Next, wear your knees out. If there were one sustainable remedy I could offer you when the going gets tough, it would be prayer. Many people, depending on their faith, might call it meditation. It doesn't matter what you call it as long as you have a place to run to. Number six, make stress your friend. Acknowledge that stress is good and make stress your friend. Based on your body's natural fight or flight response, that burst of energy will, ex will enhance your performance at the right moment. Do you know that top sportsmen are not relaxed before a big competition? Use stress wisely to push yourself that little bit harder when it counts most. 7. 
Stress is contagious. What we mean by this is that negative people can be a huge stressor. Negativity breeds stress and some people do nothing but complain. Don't, go, don't get caught up in their downing behavior. Iwasan yung mga taong nega. Recognize that these kinds of people have their own stress and then limit your contact with them. You can try to play stress doctor and teach them how to be better manage their stress but be aware that this may contribute more to your own stress so tread lightly. Number eight, copy good stress managers. When people around you are losing their heads, watch uh, for who keeps calm. Watch out for those people who are calm when there are when there are stress situations. What are they doing differently? What is their attitude? What language do they use? So you just observe. Are they trained and experienced? Figure it out from afar or sit them down for a chat. Learn from the best stress managers and copy what they do. 9. Use heavy breathing. You can trick your body into relaxing by using heavy breathing. Breathe in slowly for a count of 7, then breathe out for a count of 11. Repeat the 7-11 breathing until your heart rate slows down. Your sweaty palms dry off and things start to feel more normal. Number 10. Stop stress thought trains. It is possible to tangle yourself up in a stress knot all by yourself. If you're constantly expecting the worst to happen and say negative things to yourself, for example, if this happens, then that might happen and then we're all caught up in a creek. Most bad things never happen actually. So don't waste all that energy, energy worrying needlessly. Give stress thought trains the red light and stop them in their tracks. Know your stress hot spots and trigger points. Presentations, interviews, meetings, giving difficult feedback, tight deadlines. These are all the things that can get your heart racing. Make your own list of stress trigger points or hot spots. Be specific. It is only if it is only presentations to a certain audience that get you worked up. Does one project cause more stress than the other? Did you drink too much coffee? Knowing what causes your stress is powerful information as you can take action to make it less stressful. Number 12. Eat, drink, sleep, and be merry. Lack of sleep, poor diet, and no exercise wrecks havoc on our body and mind. Kind of obvious, but worth mentioning as it's often ignored as a stress management technique. Listen to what your mother used to say and don't burn the candle at both ends. Avoid using artificial means to dealing with your stress. That means don't automatically pour a glass of wine when you think you're getting stressed out and don't light up a cigarette. In actuality, alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, and drugs can make the problem worse. A better idea is to practice the relaxation techniques you've learned here. Then once you relax, you can have that glass of wine if you want. Go outside and enjoy Mother Nature. A little sunshine and activity can have amazing ramifications on your stress level and will enhance your entire outlook towards life. Your improved attitude will have a positive effect on everyone in your family and your circle of friends. Things that once seem overwhelming will soon become trivial matters, causing you to wonder what the predicament was. Not only will you be less stressed, you will be healthier, happier, and more energetic. Ready to face whatever obstacles come your way. 14. Give yourself permission to be a kid again. Be carefree and creative. Allow yourself freedom to express yourself and don't worry that you're not keeping with the image of who you are supposed to be. Just relax and enjoy yourself. We all have an inner child. Let it free. 15. Don't set unrealistic for goals for yourself. Many people set themselves up for, for defeat simply by setting unrealistic goals. Whatever your goal is, allow sufficient time to reach it and realize that setbacks will probably happen. Number 16. Learn it is okay to say no occasionally. Many people feel 
that they have to say yes to everyone. This is stressful, you know. You can't be all things to all people. You must first meet your own needs before you can give to others. Number 17, make time for yourself. Your number one priority, once your own needs are met, you will find you have more time for others. And you may find more pleasure in helping others when you don't feel that you must always put others' needs before your own. Number 18, now this is a great idea that really works, okay? Ready? Now, yell! That's right. Scream at the top of your lungs as loud as you can. While this may not be feasible in your home, it works great when you're in your car with the windows rolled up. Let out a guttural yelp from deep down inside. It's liberating. Next, sing. Music is extremely beneficial to rid yourself of stress. Think how much better you can feel when you belt out Bohemian Rhapsody, for example, at the top of your lungs. Who cares if you can't carry a tune? You're doing this for you. Take up a new hobby like knitting or playing jigsaw puzzle. Don't worry about being good at it. It's the process that's beneficial. Sitting still while performing repetitive movements is calming and stabilizing for many people. It can be time to collect your thoughts. Number 21. Start a garden. Tending plants, fruits, vegetables, flowers, and watching them grow, bloom, or yield food is rewarding. Avid gardeners say working a garden is the best way to control stress and worry. An added benefit is the creation of a more beautiful, restful environment. Play with a dog or cat. Experts say pet owners have longer lives and fewer stress symptoms than non-pet owners. Playing with your pet provides you good vibrations for you and for the pet. It's a form of social interaction with no pressure to meet anyone's expectations. Number 23. Look at the stars and the moon. It can be a very humbling experience to lay on a blanket with your hands behind your head and gaze up into the night sky. It's more than humbling, really. It's downright beautiful and relaxing. Number 24, treat yourself to some comfort food. But be careful or overeating could become your big stressor. Enjoy in moderation and you'll feel better. Number 25, swing. Remember the feeling of sitting inside the little piece of leather at the playground as you sway back and forth and feel the wind whipping through your hair? Do that. If you don't have a swing in your yard, go to a playground and remember to pump your legs back and forth to see how high you can go. Number 26. Take a candlelit bubble bath if you have a bathtub. Even men will benefit from a warm bath bathed in the soft glow of candlelight. Lay your head back, feel the bubbles in the warm water, and let your stress go right down the drain. Now you have 26 ways to relax and distress. You can come up with your own ways as well. The key really is to find something that makes you feel better when you're overwhelmed and practice that method faithfully. You'll be a healthier person overall. The next topic is just say no. This is a big issue so let's look at it more closely. A huge problem people who are overly stressed overly stressed have is the ability to say no. Maybe your mother wants you to take your grandma to the store but you're in the middle of a big work project. Perhaps your best friend asked you if you wouldn't mind babysitting her kids when you've already made plans with yourself to get a haircut. There's no reason why you have to say yes to everyone. In fact, there are often many times when you should turn them down. If you find yourself agreeing to do things when you really don't want to, you're a people pleaser. Sounds like a nice trait to have, but it is a huge stressor. People pleasers think of other people's needs before their own. They worry about what other people want, think, or need, and spend a lot of time doing things for others. They rarely do things for themselves and feel guilty when they do. It's hard work being a people pleaser. People pleasers hold back from saying what they really think. They don't ask for the things they would like if they think someone will be upset with them for it. 
Yet they often spend time with people who don't consider their needs at all. In fact, people pleasers often feel driven to make insensitive or unhappy people feel better, even at the detriment to themselves. Constantly trying to please other people is draining, and many people pleasers feel anxious, worried, unhappy, and tired a lot of the time. They may not understand why no one does anything for them when they do so much for others and yet they don't ask for what they need. A people pleaser may believe that if they ask someone for help and that person agrees, the person would be giving out of obligation, not because they really wanted to. The thinking goes, if they really wanted to help, they would have offered without my asking. This line of thinking happens because people pleasers themselves feel obliged to help and do not always do things because they want to. Sadly, people pleasers have been taught that their worth depends on doing things for others. When they do to take when they do take a moment for themselves, they feel selfish, indulgent, and guilty, which is why they're often on the go, rushing to get things done. Since people pleasers accomplish so much, and are easy to get along with, they are often the first to be asked to do things. They are vulnerable to be being taken advantage of. People pleasers were most likely raised in homes when their needs and feelings were not valued, respected, or considered important. They were often expected as children to respond to or to take care of other people's needs. Or they may have been silenced neglected or otherwise abused thus learning that their feelings and needs were not important in many cultures girls are raised to be people pleasers to think of others needs first and to neglect their own most women have at least some degree of people pleasing in them men who identified with their mothers often do as well People pleasers' focus is mostly on others and away from themselves. They often feel empty or don't know how they feel, what they think, or what they want for themselves. It's possible to change this pattern starting now. First, practice saying no. This is a very important word. Say it as often as you can. Just to hear the word come out of your mouth, say it loud when you are alone practice phrases with no in them such as no i can't do that or no i don't want to go there try it for simple things first and then build your way up to harder situations stop saying yes all the time try to pause or take a breath before responding to someone's request you may want to answer a request with i need to think about it first i'll get back to you or let me check my schedule and call you back. Use any phrase that you feel comfortable with that gives you time before you automatically respond with yes. You will feel guilty when you start this, but it won't always be so. Remember that your mental health is well worth the aggravation you may have to take from others. What's important is you. Figure out what gives you pleasure. For example, you may like reading magazines or watching videos, going to a park or listening to music. Give yourself permission to do these things and enjoy them. Ask someone to help you with something. I know this is a hard one, but you can do it. After all, everyone, is, everyone else is asking you for favors. Be tolerant if they turn you down. Just because you have always told them yes, doesn't mean they always have to tell you yes. Many people pleasers believe that nobody will like them if they stop doing things for other people. If this happens, then you are being used and it's better that they aren't in your life anyway. People enjoy your company for who you are and not for what you do. You deserve to take time to yourself, to say no, and to take care of yourself without feeling guilty. It's within your reach to change, one small step at a time. Now, our next topic is take a break. So often, we know inside ourselves that we need a break. 
That break might be a full-fledged vacation or a weekend getaway. Either way, getting out of the daily grind can be amazingly liberating and a huge way to get rid of stress and anxiety. Unfortunately, right now, we cannot really travel because of the COVID-19. Many people think that they can take time to get away. This is toxic thinking. Get out and get away. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be really very far. How many times have you continued working knowing that you are not giving 100% to the task at hand? How many times have you read or written the same sentences over and over again as your mind keeps wandering and thinking about other things? How often have you wanted to take a break from the family or kids but feared the consequences of doing so? It's time for a break. Why do we not allow ourselves the time to take a time out? Perhaps we feel like we don't deserve it, deserve it, or that there's just too much to be done. There are many genuine reasons for needing to complete jobs and tasks. However, we may also on occasion have hidden agendas as to why we cannot stop for a break. Why? Ego could be ego. Some people enjoy boasting about how late they had to work in order to complete a project or how much effort they invested in order to complete the job so quickly. This type of person is often looking to impress others with their efforts, thereby increasing their ego in the process. Or perhaps you think that you can't take the time off. I can't stop. I just have to get this finished. Does this sound familiar? I can't stop because the job has to be finished. Why? So I can move straight on to the next thing and the next and the next, etc. This person will find that there is always something that has to be done, which will constantly prevent him or her from taking a break. You feel like you need to be needed. A mother managing the household, kids, and other chores may feel as if her household will collapse if she were to put her feet up or take a weekend off. By not taking a break, she can keep convincing herself that her role is crucial and the family would collapse without her. This may be true, but it won't happen because she's taken a time out for herself. Get rid of the thinking. You can get some amazing benefits just by, just by taking a little time for yourself. Allowing your mind and your body to rest can help refocus your attention, sharpen your wits, and increase motivation. In addition, Taking time out helps to relieve stress, can aid the recovery of tired muscles, and also promotes the discovery that there is more to life than just work. Many athletes will tell you that an important part of their training routine is rest. Muscles need time to repair after workout. Remember that your brain is a muscle too. It needs time to rest and recuperate in order to perform at its best. By giving your brain time off, you'll be able to better concentrate. Tasks that you once struggled with will be easier. A break can be anything from a 10-minute meditation session to a trip around the world and anything in between. A break needs to take your mind off the everyday tedium of life. When you take this rest, you absolutely cannot feel guilty about it. You need this time off, so enjoy it. You'll be a better mother, father, wife, or husband for it. If you're feeling tired, unmotivated, or just in need of a rest, don't be a martyr or look negatively at this. You may actually find that in reality, allowing yourself a break will actually help you ultimately become more efficient and effective in every part of your life. Plus, you'll get the badly needed recharging of your batteries that you need and sorely deserve. Work can probably be one of the most stressful places to be. You might think that none of these techniques can help you when you're around your co-workers. You couldn't be more wrong. Now, let's talk about relaxing at work. Some of the suggestions in this webinar can certainly be practiced at work. Here's a tried and true method to help you relax at work. First and foremost, find a place to sit. Sit up straight with your back against the back of your chair, your feet flat on the floor, and your hands resting lightly on your thighs. 
If possible, close your eyes. You may do the exercise without closing your eyes, but closing your eyes will help you relax a bit more. Do not clench your eyes shut. Let your eyelids fall naturally. Breathe in slowly through your nose, counting to five. Hold the breath for a count of five. Breathe out slowly, counting to five. Repeat. This exercise is performed by tensing and holding a set of muscles for a count of five and then relaxing the set of muscles for a count of five. When you tense each muscle set, do it as hard as you can without hurting yourself. When you release the hold, be as relaxed as possible. Begin by tensing your feet. Do this by pulling your feet off the floor and your toes toward you while keeping your heels on the floor. Hold for a slow count of five, Release the hold. Let your feet fall gently back. Feel the relaxation. Think about how it feels compared to when you tense the muscles. Relax for a count of five. Next, tense your thigh muscles as, as hard as you can. Hold for a count of five. Relax the muscles and count to five. Next, Tighten your abdominal muscles and hold for a count of five. Relax the, mus the muscles for a count of five. Be sure you are continuing to sit up straight. Tense your arm and hand muscles by squeezing your hands into fists as hard as you can. Hold for a count of five. Relax the muscles completely for a count of five. Next. Tighten your upper back by pushing your shoulders back as if you are trying to touch your shoulder blades together. Hold for a count of five and relax for a count of five. Tense your shoulders by raising them toward your ears as if shrugging and holding for a count of five and then relax for a count of five. Next, tighten your neck First, by gently moving your head back as if looking at the ceiling and holding for five. Relax for five, then gently drop your head forward and hold for five. Relax for a count of five. Tighten your face muscles. First, open your mouth wide and hold for five. Relax for five, then raise your eyebrows and high, up high and hold for five. Relax for five again. Finally, clench your eyes tightly shut and hold for five. Relax with eyes gently closed for five. Finish the exercise with breathing. Breathe in slowly through your nose, counting to five. Hold the breath for a count of five. Breathe out slowly, counting to five. Repeat four times and that's it. So that's it. That's the end of our webinar. Thank you for joining me in today's uh, webinar. I hope that this will help lessen your stress. Uh, please share this webinar to your friends and family who, who you think might need this. Uh, this uh, webinar is automatically saved in our channel, Tripty Mark and Des. So please uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you again soon.